Hey, what is going on guys and girls? I'm Vastride and today we're going to be going over some tips and tricks for raid healing in PvP. This is the second part to our two-part healing guide. In part one, Inari has covered all the information regarding setting your healer up, including your gear, CP, bar setup and abilities, as well as some other good insights. You can find the link for that one down below and I definitely recommend checking it out first if you haven't done so already. In this part of the guide, however, we're going to be focusing more on gameplay and some of the skills you will need to hone in order to be a successful healer in PvP. So, before we get too in depth, first we're going to expand on some of the points raised in part 1 of this guide. And Ari pointed out that there's a vital difference between reactive healing and preventative healing. So to put that simply, big burst heals versus constant smaller heals that top your group off. I have to reiterate this point because it's far better to prevent your allies from getting low in the first place than it is to be bringing them back to full health. The latter of the two just exposes them to more surprise burst potential including executes and subsequently just vicious death procs. So to give an example of this, the kind of thing I mean is, and something I hear from other healers a lot, is that their Breath of Life or their Budding Seeds hits for like 20k on crits. And while that's all well and good, all I'm thinking when I hear it is that for that to be of any advantage to me, it means my allies have to be missing 20k health in the first place. And that's just not a position I ever want them to be in. So if you're trying to primarily heal with these large healing output abilities, you'd just be overhealing and wasting resources you don't have to be. Secondly, regarding the gear setups, when assigning the sets mentioned by Inari to your group, you want to be thinking about prioritizing certain sets to healers versus other support roles. So what I mean by this is say ensuring where you can that your healers get to use the back bar sets, such as Spell Power Cure or Transmutation, so that they can also run a monster set like Earth Gore, versus say having your support builds running it, because your healers will have all the relevant CP, passives and traits to benefit most from the set. At the same time, you also want to be considering the 2-4 piece passives, so perhaps rather than having a healer run a set like Sanctuary, which has this tick of healing received in it, which we don't really need, you have another support role use that. So a healer can wear something like SPC, which has fantastic 2-3-4 piece bonuses that will affect our healing output a lot more. Moving on now, we're going to talk about some of the things you want to be thinking about during your actual gameplay that will help you improve and more effectively heal your raid. I'm going to break this down into four key skills, which are resource management, situational awareness, positioning, and lastly, intuition. We're going to start with resource management because it's a skill you're going to need to master for any class or role you play. As a healer specifically, the way I like to think about it is that fundamentally, you want to run the least amount of regen you can get away with in order to maximize your healing potential. Ultimately, the better your resource management is, the more healing output you'll be able to have. The best ways to maintain our resources as a healer are firstly ensuring we don't overheal. Like I said before, we don't want to be spamming our abilities in a non-cost effective way. We want to consider each of our heals to be a different tool and ensure we're using the right tool for the right job. Secondly, we want to keep our buffs up and utilize our class. On Templar for example, we want to make sure we have high uptime on abilities like Rune Focus as well as using our other abilities like Repentance to our advantage. For example, with this skill specifically, something I like to do a lot is roll dodge my way through piles of bodies when I know I'm about to hit a huge repent and fill the stamina bar all the way back up. In this way, I've essentially gotten a free roll dodge that perhaps helped me get to the front of my group if they were moving, or perhaps through a breach where I needed some increased survivability and that dodge chance. Lastly, we want to be heavy attacking regularly. We don't want to get carried away with this, but typically we're in heavy armor, so the magicka return from heavy attacks will help us sustain a lot. Equally, we don't want to compromise our healing output for the sake of this alone. We don't want to be caught heavy attacking someone off in the distance while our raid is getting bombed, so we have to be really proactive about this. Once we start dropping below about 60% of our magicka, we want to start looking to create opportunities for ourselves where we can get some heavy attacks in. So to put all this into practice, let's say my raid is repositioning from the middle of these stairs down to this flag. I want to be focusing on primarily using healing springs to lay a path for the group to move through. I want to make sure I position my heals just at the front section of the raid, if not a little bit ahead. By doing this, I'm capitalizing on the magic return from my group members standing inside my healing springs, as well as giving them stamina return via the Master Resto staff. If the objective of my group is to reposition, and that stamina return makes it a lot easier for them, especially when you have 3-4 to four healers doing the same thing. By doing this, I've also outlined a safe path for them to move through, which incentivizes them to stick together and makes healing them a lot easier. This is less detrimental when we're in a closed environment like a keep, but when we're in the open field, it becomes exponentially more important. 
Once we reach the flag, I want to make sure the first thing I do is lay down all my stationary buffs and heals so as to get the most out of my mending passives. Then I want to go back to laying down sets of healing springs on their stationary location. While doing this, I want to make sure I'm keeping uptime on my, all my other heal over times like mutagen or preferably rapid regen, as well as maintaining my own buffs like rune focus. The only time during this situation where I want to be using breath of life is if at some point during the move my allies got stuck at the back and are taking a lot of single target damage, in which case I want to turn around and give them a big burst heal just until they're safe back in the healing springs range again. So like I said before, each heal is a different tool. Healing springs is best used for creating a path of movement for my group to move from one position to another, while breath of life is a better burst heal for when my group members are taking a lot of single target focus. And then lastly, we have a heal like our healing ultimate, which should be saved when we foresee huge amounts of incoming damage onto our raid. Bringing me to my next point, which is situational awareness. As a healer, this is one of the most make or break aspects of your gameplay and you're going to need to get it right. As well as following the calls your leader is making, you're also going to have to constantly track what is happening around you. And like we said before, as a rule of thumb, you want to be doing preventative healing, not reactive healing. So we need to be able to see damage or the potential for damage happening before it does. To help with this, I often find a useful trick is to pretend my raid is the enemy raid. And whatever it is we may be doing, I'm saying to myself, would now be a good time to hit them? Are they vulnerable at the moment? Are they too tightly stacked, etc. This will allow you to better predict the movements of your enemies and make sure you're able to react before it's too late. It will allow you the extra time to properly position yourself for the enemy bomb as well as ensure you're healing your allies at the moment they start taking damage. To assert this, we're going to move on to the third point, which is positioning. Once you've really nailed your situation awareness and resource management, you can start thinking more in depth about where you position yourself, which is a really good way to make sure you stay alive and simplify the way you're healing your group. Positioning is not only relative to your personal placement in relation to your group, but also where you're placing your heals for them. And it's important to know how to change this up based on the situation. The best way for us to discuss this is to talk through some potential scenarios you might find yourself in and we can discuss the different strategies you might want to implement in each one. We'll also have some gameplay in the background to showcase what we're talking about. So we already talked about repositioning earlier and discussed moving from the stairs to the flag. Group gameplay is for the most part about movement, so this is the kind of healing you're going to be doing most of the time. Something I do want to add regarding repositioning, a mistake I see a lot of healers make is casting their healing ultimates at dangerous times while the group is mobile. Don't forget that you're going to be stationary while you cast this, so if the group is on the move, you want to make sure you're at least well ahead of the group before you cast this, and if the group catches up to you, make sure you cancel the remainder of like its duration and continue moving with them. Secondly, I want to talk about what I like to call cover heals, which is when you take the initiative to get ahead of your group if they're going to have to move through a high risk position. So one example of this that happens a lot is that you might be contesting a resource flag and you have to reposition into the tower to get some line of sight, meaning your whole raid needs to move through a choke and like get through that tiny little doorway, in which case it can be a very dangerous situation and a lot of high pressure. And if there's other organized groups around, it's going to be really intense and difficult. So in this situation, what it can be good to do is to go into the tower a couple of seconds ahead of the call so that you can cast your healing ult as the raid comes running through. The way I like to think about this is like as a member of a SWAT team um, and that you're ushering your group members through your, like while you're giving them a covering fire, you're ushering them through you. The next example I want to discuss is when your group might be stationary for an extended period of time. This might be to contest an objective or a critical area of terrain that you need to keep or perhaps a siege line or something where it's going to be long periods of extended pressure on you. This situation can be very high risk. It's also going to be the time when your resource pools take the most pressure. So some things that are going to be most important in this situation are ensuring you keep good uptime on your buffs. You want to make sure you have good ground AoE cleanse and rune focus down at all times. Ensuring that you get that minor mending buff from the sacred ground passive. You also want to make sure you minimize your potential risk by positioning yourself not directly in the middle of the raid, but preferably off to a side, ideally with some LOS to use or easily access if you have to, if you start taking a lot of single target. The reason you want to do this is because the bulk of your raid is always going to be the focused target for your enemy groups. And you want to be able to make sure if your group gets pushed and negated, 
you can still cast your healing ultimate and breath of life into the group. In purposely placing yourself outside of the group, you also want to make sure that you are considering your own safety and not taking too much single target focus. You also want to have time to be prepared for the group to move because if they move in the direction furthest away from you relative to them and you haven't given yourself enough time to keep up, then you're going to find yourself at the back of a moving raid which is a huge don't do it for healers. Lastly, I want to cover kiting and spreading out from enemy bombs. The way you do this will vary depending on how your group or your raid likes to engage enemy organized groups. This is one of the fewer times where you want to be relying primarily on breath of life. And in this situation, ideally, your group is also spreading out so as to avoid the bulk of enemy damage. Due to this, it will be very hard to keep up sets of healing springs on each member. So you instead want to be spamming big burst heals to allies that need it the most. Once your group is ready to recondense, you want to go straight back to having healing springs ready for them at the position they are about to be, which is hopefully getting a good impact and counter bomb on the enemy raid you just spread out from. Lastly, I want to talk about intuition, which is a more personal and group specific skill, and subsequently it can't really be taught. However, it is worth a mention and something you should really be analyzing within your own gameplay. What I mean by intuition is your ability to read the situation instinctively and react preemptively. We talked already about situational awareness, which related more to your opponents. However, intuition will relate more to your own group and its leader. You need to be able to make predictions about the movement of your own group before the call for such movement is made. Typically, healers are very slow classes. You are not fast. So movement is not forgiving. Not only are you going to need to be able to know when your group is going to start moving, to get to cover or LOS, you're going to need to be able to predict where your leader will go. You will over time need to familiarize yourself with the patterns of your group leader and the decisions they like to make so that you can best predict where you're going to be in the next few seconds. This forward thinking will improve your ability to keep up with your group and make it easier for your leader to manage their decisions because they will not have to doubt that their members will fall behind. Even once you perfect this, 1 in 20 times you'll still make the wrong prediction go the wrong way or engage something too early only to have the lead change their mind, but it's well worth the 19 times you got it right prior. With the right communication to your group, even when you make that wrong decision, it can be easily remedied. I think that about sums it up, so whether or not you're completely new to PvP healing or you're a seasoned veteran, I still hope there's something you found beneficial. If there are any further questions, please leave them in the comments section below, and if you did find this helpful, please smash that like button um, and subscribe. Take care and peace.